Good afternoon or good morning wherever you are. I really hope you enjoyed the Flow Summit. There's been some amazing sessions. You've got loads more coming up, so stick with us. But I found that there was a 20 minute gap in the agenda and I thought, oh, I'm going to seize this opportunity to try to tell you a little bit about micro jobs. So you'll have probably seen in our adverts on the beginning of the sessions and also at the bottom of the speaker slides, there's this thing called micro jobs. And I just wanted to spend probably less than 20 minutes just telling you a little bit what it is, why we built it, and then probably answering some of your objections why you might not want to use it. So let's get started. Right, what is Microjobs? So Microjobs is a freelancer marketplace that's dedicated to people with Microsoft skills. So as you as a buyer, if you need somebody to jump on a call and help you out for 30 minutes, two days, whatever, then we can supply a freelancer to help you do that. And the idea is like a, sh a shopping system where you come on, you look at the existing micro jobs that are on there. And if you don't find something you like, you can always contact the freelancer and get a custom job done. Or if you want to go even further and you've got a bit more of a project to build, you can create a project request. So to just to reiterate, it's purely for Microsoft skills. So if you go onto sites like a Fiverr or Upwork freelancer, you're going to find the whole breadth of uh, skills on there you're not just going to find you will find some microsoft stuff but they're not going to accommodate and then treat microsoft like a first class citizen they're going to show you plumbers electricians graphic designers uh, cooks anything you can think of and so we wanted to specifically dedicate it to microsoft so that leads us on now why did we actually build micro jobs what was the purpose because it's taken us a load of time to build and you might think we're a bit mad for doing it but we had really good reasons for doing it and we're still really confident it's going to be a platform that's going to be really useful for you going forward so the first reason we did is we needed it uh, we needed a SharePoint expert about four years ago. As an aside, we have a product called Dockery for SharePoint, which works with SharePoint on-premises. And I think we were running a conference at the same time. I think it was one of our global conferences, and the team was just rammed. And we needed somebody to get a release out of Dockery fast. So I popped a message, I think it was on LinkedIn. I was just stuck it on Facebook. And we got a few, not many, but we got a few replies. And then with the replies I got, I didn't know the people. And then I was thinking, oh, right, if I pay this guy, then am I gonna know that my money's safe? And also, does he have the skills? I mean, who recommends him? Is he reviewed? And I looked on his LinkedIn profile. It's, it's all risky, it felt risky to me. And so that was the first thing that came into my head at that point saying, oh, we need a better system for that. We need something like uh, an Amazon marketplace with Microsoft skills. So that's the first idea we had about it about four years ago. We also run a load of forums so you're probably in one of our facebook groups you're probably in one of the linkedin groups we've got our own community and i moderate loads of them and i can see that there's a real uh, skill shortage people are trying to get the skills they can't get them and then there's people that are in just in dire straits they've got a particular microsoft problem they've got a debug and migration is not going well and they jump on and they're desperate for help and what i wanted to do is build a system where you don't just take somebody on for six months you just might need one hour to get an expert on a call and say look all oh, my migrations broken can you help and so we built it for that reason as well <laughs> and then the next reason is um, Microsoft when they released Office 365 and Azure I think it's changed the way we work massively so before that you'd have big products like SharePoint they'd install it Oh, sorry you'd install it and then your staff would go on a training course and they'd be good with those skills for three years sure you have things like service packs that would update the features of that particular product but generally your staff are good for three to four years and now microsoft release virtually every week across their entire product range they're always throwing new things in it's it's actually insane now and that is great for you as a business because you no longer have to wait those three to four years to get that feature that's been driving you mad that you desperately want. Microsoft's doing a great job at actually releasing the features that we need to make our businesses more productive. But the downside of that is that your staff and your developers and your IT pros, they're going to find it really hard and also a bit frustrated to keep your skills up to date. And so what we're finding is a good use case of uh, Microsoft's at the moment is that people are using it to come and get the latest training experience from the experts. And in fact, quite a lot of the freelancers on our summits are also uh, experts. And, and one of the reasons we did the freelancers, as an aside, one of the reasons we did the summits is we wanted to showcase the freelancers' skills so you could see that they really know their stuff. 
So if you want to take it one step further, you go, oh, I really liked Matt Weston's session. I thought it was amazing, but I've just got this question, this question. I'd like him to teach me a bit more of this. Or I'd like a bit more bespoke on that. You can do that in Microjobs. So all you've got to do is just lob onto Microjobs, uh, contact Matt, have a chat, and then transfer the payment. That's, that's it. And then the other thing is, I think that this... There's a lot of talk in the industry now about the gig economy. Companies like Airbnb, Uber, they're changing everything. And I think, especially with the new generation coming in, they expect convenience. And uh, me, I'm an old timer, I expect convenience. Now I expect to have everything on my phone, click, 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 and I've got somebody. And we actually use, we're dog food in uh, uh, Microjobs ourselves. And so one of the things we dog food for is we, we need people to write the books and we need somebody to do a call for speakers. And I'm getting you. There is a transition in mindset because you, us old timers, we expect that uh, we we go and do the hiring process. It takes 43 days to hire somebody on average. You bring somebody in, and that's it. You you then use them as a, an employee. Whereas it takes a mindset to think, well, actually, I need somebody. I need somebody just for two weeks to build me this call for speakers process, which is exactly what we're doing. And I'm going to share some of the information around that at the next summit. <clears throat> and once your mind flips and thinking, well, actually, I don't mind you using freelancers for that I'm, I'm okay creating a spec I'm okay chatting to the freelancer and then I know I'm going to get the work done uh, I think it's all changing the way we work and I'm that's one of the big reasons I think that my, something like Microsoft is going to be really really uh, really useful going forward right so that's a little bit about Microjobs what it is and why we built it and I know that probably the next thing that's in your mind is if I think back to myself four years ago when I was looking for a SharePoint developer to help me you're going to have a few uh, worries that it's not the service for you. So I just wanted to try to go through some of those things and reassure you that uh, Microjobs is actually worthwhile trying. So the first one is you're probably going to worry that when you make the payment, it's not it's not uh, secure. And what we've had to do, we spent ages on this. So we, uh, we actually partnered with a payment provider called Stripe. I'm sure you've ever heard of them. And they've got a system there called Stripe Connect, and it's very escrow-like. And what happens is when you make the payment, that payment goes into the freelancer Stripe Connect account. They can't draw on it until you've actually agreed the job's done. But the point is we don't hold the payment. So if we if we go under as a company, that money's still completely safe. And what will happen is, like I say, when once the freelancer begins the work, you can then say, yeah, that work is amazing, you can rate them, and then the freelancer can draw the money into their own account. So it's the, the key point there is it's 100% secure, it goes into Stripe Connect, who are heavily regulated, they're massive, and your money is safe. And the other key point is there, you don't pay anything until the work is done and you're 100% happy. Right, so the, the other myth you've probably got is that Remote working won't work for me. I don't work with remote workers. Now, the way I can answer that is try it on a small job first because we've been in business now for, I think it's 12 years. Our entire company is remote. We've had uh, developers working for us in Belarus. My business partner, Hugo, is down in London. Uh, we've got people up in Leeds. We've got people up in Chester. We've even worked with people from America. I've got somebody helping me on Facebook ads over in India. We are remote. We're totally used to remote working. We like to get together every now and then, but we're really used to remote working. And there is really, really nice. I mean, I think with today's tools, there's no excuse not to work remote. You've got things like Teams that are just really, really good at collaboration. If not Teams, you've got Slack, dare I say it. You've got amazing meeting software. It's so easy just to jump on a call. And there is no kind of excuse because it's, it's it's cheap and it also saves you the money of actually hiring somebody and getting them a desk and getting them in. And then also you might not want to, going off on that point, you might not want somebody just to help you out on a migration for six months. You might not want to hire them. You might just want somebody for two hours, give them access to your system or you know show them whatever you need to show to in order to get help. So remote, remote working, definitely give it a try because it, it really works for us as a company. One of the other objections you might have is that you hire a freelancer and they're, they're no good. And one, that's one of the key things we thought of from day one. So we have to have a good ratings and review system. Because if you have a ratings and review system, it really helps the freelancer. Because if they do a great job, you're going to give them a five star rating. And then that will help you inform other customers who want to use their service how good they are. 
And it also means that if they do a bad job, they're gonna get one star, which is, that's like the death knell for kind of marketplaces like ours. Because how many times do we look at the reviews on Amazon when we go and buy a box? If the reviews are, if you get 90% reviews, five stars on a particular product, you're gonna buy it. If the 90% one star, you're not gonna buy it. And so reviews and ratings allow us to, for you to share your experiences of other potential buyers, but also for you to learn how other buyers that have gone before you have interacted with that freelancer. And then from also from the freelancer's point of view, <coughs> they, they can rate you as a uh, buyer, uh, which also helps other freelancers who you might want to work with work out how cool you are to work with. So we've got both sides of the ratings and we feel that that's one thing that's really going to uh, help the platform moving forward. Anyway, I hope that's given you some insight into what Microjobs is why we built it and also covered off some of the worries and objections you might have about trying to use a service like ours. So for the remainder, I want to stop boring you with PowerPoint and just dive into what the experience is like as a buyer. So as you can see, I've gone through the process of uh, logging in now. So I'm now on as March A4, I'm a buyer, but I'm actually also a freelancer. So there are there is some extra options on here if you're just a buyer that you won't be interested in. If you're interested in freelancing, then definitely take note. So the first experience, let's go to the home page, is you, we showcase some of the micro jobs and they're usually the latest or they're, they're recommended to you. So for example, if I wanted to go into Marcel's job, you can see that it's kind of a templated small job that you might want to buy. So if I wanted to have Marcel as my Office 365 mentor for four hours, then I'd read the job description and I'd be off and running, boom, I'd just buy there and then you'd be into the payment screen and we'd then take the money, put it into Stripe Connect, then you'd be sent to a transaction screen where we can chat with Marcel and you'd agree when the work was going to start. But probably more often than not, in some of the behavior we're seeing, there is actually another way. So if you liked this job and perhaps you wanted Office 365 and you were wondering whether Marcel knew anything about Teams and maybe you wanted six hours, what you do in that situation, you'd request a custom micro job and that's really simple. So all you do is you'd say, uh, hi Marcel, do you do Teams as well? Uh, you know, you'd obviously put a lot more description on that. And then you'd click Submit Request. And then what Marcel will do is saying, yeah, Mark, sure I do Teams. I can, I can definitely do that. And here's a revised quote. And then you'd see in the transaction screen, uh, it's now $600 because he wants to do Teams or he might do it for 500, who knows? and you just accept it and then you're into the transaction just as if you'd bought that 500. There is several ways you can connect with the user. So for example, if I go onto Marcel's profile screen, you can see all the jobs he offers and I could do request custom job there. So it's the same thing. Now, what we're also seeing on the platform is people want uh, to use micro jobs for slightly longer pieces of work. And so if it's completely bespoke and you can't find a freelancer that fits the bill and you would like to invite for tenders or people to bid on your job, sorry, what you do is you request a job. And so obviously you'd say something along the lines of, uh, I want help uh, with SharePoint development to build a web part for our product DocRead. And then in here you'd spec out exactly what you want doing. Now, obviously is with, if you, any kind of system where you want something doing in requirements, the more requirements you can put in here, the better your tenders are going to be because otherwise the freelancers are probably going to waste more time because they're going to go, uh, it's a bit vague, can you tell me more? And you'll be answering lots of freelancers questions. So the more specific you can be in here, the better. And if you're struggling with that, definitely get in contact with us and we can give you a bit of advice and even help create that request for you. Uh, you also pick a category. Now the category is important because what it allows it to do, we've got freelancers that are subscribed to certain categories. So if you're a, let's look down here, let's, uh, is yours quite a lot? Let's look, so Power App, Power BI for example. If you create a Power BI related my uh, request, we will alert the freelancers that are interested and have the skills for Power BI. So we'll send them an email saying there's a new tender coming from Joe Blogs. Would you like to uh, build it now? Sorry, bid on it now. And then, you set yourself a deadline, so this is like a, if it has to be live by the 26th, you'd set that. But then you'd accept, uh, also specify the expected delivery. So if you expect it to take five days, pop it in there. And then what will happen is they will see if they can do it. And then more importantly, put a, a lower end budget and a higher end budget. And that gives the freelancer a really good indication of uh, basically how much you're, uh, how much you're willing to spend on this particular piece of job. 
if you can upload any files, any kind of uh, requirements documents or anything that would help them spec that job much better, then definitely do that there. And then once you're done, click submit and then we'll post it. We'll, it'll go to approval and then we'll either feed back and say you probably need to write a little bit more or we'll just approve it. And then it goes into the request system and then you'll get alerts when your job comes in. So that's the request side of things. Uh, so just to recap, there's three ways. You can buy an existing micro job that somebody spec'd out. You can look at an existing micro job and ask for a custom version of that, i.e. some amendments to it. Or you can contact a freelancer and ask them to do something completely bespoke. And then the, the final one is this one here, request, where you can create a complete new request and people will bid for the job. And that's that so far. Just a bit more about what's, what it's like when you're in here. If you've got, if you are a freelancer and you do have jobs on there, you can either post a new job here and then we'll approve it and then it will appear as a, a micro job that people can buy. You can then look at your own jobs. So for example, I have a job on here which is uh, reasonably popular where we'll publish a blog post about your Microsoft product on the community and we charge $200 for that. Uh, so that's one of my jobs and I can go and edit it, turn it off or I can pay to have it featured. But if you're interested in purchases, what you can see in here, I've got no active purchases at the moment, but I have got some completed. So for example, I bought, I've tested out actually, I've downloaded some free ebooks because I do use this as a bit of a test account for myself as well. But you can see I've actually bought some uh, Power Apps micro jobs to help, I think that was to help us uh, write one of our ebooks. Uh, but let's have a look in here. So you, what you can do is you can go into the order detail and this is the screen once you've paid this screen will be shown to you and what will happen there'll be a text box down here where you can chat to the uh, the freelance yourself but it's a good way of seeing that what happens and there'll be a load of conversation in here uh, i was going to show you that but then because of gdpr i don't want to give any uh, particular personal details away so I, I won't do that now but you can imagine there'll be like loads of ch uh, chat messages between myself and the freelancer in here i probably will record that in a bit more of a test environment later on uh, so that's how you see it. You can also see any payments you've made. So here's all the money coming in and going out, the transactions. And then as a freelancer myself, I can then get payout. So I've got nothing because I've taken all the money. Uh, so I can take out the money there and transfer it to my own bank account as a freelancer. So as a buyer, you won't see that particular screen. You can also do things like if you, because there's a lot of micro jobs on here now, and you might actually be in the state where you're thinking, oh, well, I'm quite interested in quite a few of these. So what you could do is you can go on to uh, Matt W's job and you can say, I like that one. And then when you go back into here and look at my favorites, you can then see all your favorites there. So it's a nice way of organizing your kind of jobs that you're probably interested in purchasing down the line. Uh, there's an alerting system so when something happens as either a buyer or a freelancer we alert you and you get uh, messages here which you can then see and go and act on yourselves there's also an inbox so you can see that uh, but yes there's a there's an inbox of all of the messages I've got so that's a way to manage your, your messages on the system effectively and then you can see all the reviews and feedback uh, I don't have any at the moment I don't think got none pending and I don't have any oh, I do have some assigned to me oh thank you Fraser and five stars so that's how you can see all your feedback there and the feedback's really important like I mentioned before because uh, it's it's the thing that actually shows the buyer how good the freelancer is so if you get lots of five stars you're going to do well if you get lots of one stars then you're not going to do so well and the same goes for a buyer as well because it works to both ways uh, that's all I wanted to show there any questions or anything you would like to know more about just leave it in the chat and like I say it's uh, I think the best thing for you to do is if you're worried about it in any shape or form I would just start off really small just think see if somebody can train you for one hour where you're spending 50 to 100 dollars there's a few jobs on there I think uh, there's probably some flow jobs actually uh, low end there you go there's a 50 dollar one there Uh, I'm sure there's another one but I can't find it start small and give it a try and if you have bought an all access pass what we do is we give you $50 off 
And so on selected micro jobs, so there's an email on there that we will send you where you can use that voucher and you get $50 straight off. So it becomes like less of a barrier to entry for you. Uh, so start small, see if you like it, see if you can work with some of the freelancers and then I guarantee you once you get uh, really involved with the freelancer and they do good value for you, you'll be using them for months and months and months because it's happened to us. So that's all. Enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you very much for listening. It's over and out from me. Bye-bye.